Hi, I'm Jason Hall, Vice President of Culinary Research and Development for South Bend, Crown, and Firex. And today, I'm gonna to walk you through the setup of your Kucha Mix. When you turn the unit on for the first time, you have programs and you have settings. In the program side, you're gonna have all of these folders available for saved programs that you build and then drop into the designated folder of your choosing, which we have even more on the next frame. Desserts, pasta, rice, soup, on the first frame, we have sauces, meat, fish, poultry, chef's favorites, favorites overall. And then the recipe book shows us all of the recipes that are entered in the unit. Manual is where we usually start. That's where we're going to walk through and build our recipes and get used to using automation for the first time. So the manual mode lets us have all of our variables available as we go through the cooking process. Also in manual mode, if we're using agitation, we have to hold down the agitator button for two seconds in order to get the prompt to come up. And that's what's going to let us adjust those variables during cooking in manual mode. If you're just to push it, it's going to run at one static speed the entire time. So again, hold that button down for two seconds. The options will pop up to give you different mixing speeds and agitation. If the unit is equipped with the confectionery package, the same is true for the jacket heaters. You have to hold that down for two seconds in manual mode for those options to pop up so that you can change and adjust those things throughout cooking. In manual mode, you're stuck at one temperature for the duration of cooking. So each time we start, if we were to start right now at 356 degrees, if now we wanted to change our temperature, we're gonna hit stop and slide and drop. That's how you get back out to the first phase. Also over here, if I'm running in a manual mode, I always use the infinite timer. That's gonna count up the entire time so that I can make my set points. I know that my oil cooked for three minutes. I know that my uh, onion sauteed for five and a half minutes. I'm gonna document those things in order to transfer this into an automated recipe on the next frame. So we'll back out of here, back to our first screen. <clears throat> in the settings side, we're gonna go through programs. That's where we're gonna build our program for the first time. Languages, we have all of these languages available to program into the unit, or we can do multi-language. If we have a diverse kitchen, we can have English and Spanish prompts that come up at the exact same time. Firmware updates, when these are available, they'll either be emailed to the user or a flash drive will be sent. And all we'll do is put the flash drive into the unit once we've downloaded that, that update, press start, and this just shows the progress of it. Very, very simple. In our date and time, it's very important to set the date and time correct. If the date and time is not correct, our HACCP plan is not going to be correct on the next uh, page there. Settings and test, these things are password protected as well as parameters. And those I do on site, or if we have to remote start up, I will do that through a Zoom meeting or FaceTime or whatever platform we choose to use. But th that's where we're going to calibrate the unit for the first time. Also, you have all these color schemes to choose from, so that if you wanna change the way that your unit looks, maybe green to match your menus or to match your business, we have those options as well. So we have all these options available. Now, the important things in import and export. For our import, it's password protected again, but import is gonna be if we have more than one unit. We want to import recipes, we wanna import parameters, we wanna import settings from a unit that we were already using. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then export, same thing. This is gonna be where we export HACCP, et cetera. So we're gonna enter the code, which is four zeros for export. And then it's gonna tell us what we can pull. HACCP, we wanna download our HACCP plan. It's as simple as putting the USB stick in and pressing start, it downloads it. Very, very easy. <clears throat> Parameter settings are the same thing. On a startup, if I have built out a unit and we've been working on that unit, we've run the tests, we've run your recipes through, if you have a second unit, we don't have to go through and do all that on the second unit. We can simply clone it by copying the parameters and then uploading this flash drive into the other unit, clicking import, and it becomes a clone of the first unit, including all the recipes and everything that we've built. So the big important things that you're gonna use on, the, on a most regular basis in export is HACCP. Import, instead of it being four zeros, this is 1000 and we get into what, what do we wanna import? So now we've moved to our other unit. Do we wanna import the parameters from our first unit? Do we wanna import the uh, cooking, the languages, the programs? So we have a lot of options here 
that I'll walk through during a startup, which usually I'm on site for, or we can do virtually again. Now, the big thing in settings <coughs> is programs. This is where we're going to build a program for the first time. So we're gonna click new to start a new program. We have all these other options available that you see on the other side. That's if we wanna edit an existing program. So we could go in and we could say, well, you know, our chicken curry we really like, but we need to adjust one parameter. This is going to be the interface that we use in order to adjust parameters of preset programs. When we build a program for the first time, we're gonna click new. So we have multiple phases that we can build throughout the recipe, up to 20 phases um, and three messages for each of those. So let's say our first goal is to bring our oil up to temperature. We have to first decide how do we want to monitor temperature? Is it from the bottom of the pan? Is it by using a product probe if there's a lot of liquid like shallow frying? Is it a Delta program where we're using sugar-based products or egg thickened products? So we have a nice slow and low approach. This unit actually has the option to cook on an angle to mimic stir frying, as well as the product being cooked on an angle to incorporate air. This unit's also equipped with a sous vide probe, so we can monitor the sous vide temperatures in different ways and shapes and forms as well. So we wanna very simply, let's just say we're going to do a uh, French onion soup. So we're gonna choose the bottom heat. We, need, we want to get our first phase at 280 degrees. And this is gonna be our first message. What do we want to tell the person who's actually pressing start? Add oil. Now, the important thing every time you enter a message to turn all of these functions on so that they get an audible and visual prompt for each message when they press start. The end user is only gonna see the prompt. They'll never see any of this back stuff. This is just us building that program for the first time. So we click the check mark and now we have our first message built. Um, the other important part of this is how do we wanna monitor that oil? Do we want to start the timer when it reaches temp Usually in the first phase when there's fat, I always just add one minute so that we know we've held that, that temperature for a minute before we've gone into our next process. Now, agitation, we have all these available. We can stir constantly, and then our speed can be anywhere from 15 to 15 revolutions, 15 to 50 revolutions per minute. Uh, now we can add a pause to it, and we can choose how long the mixer is on, how long the mixer is off, and the speed. And our third option is having two pauses. What's the speed? What's the on time and off time for both 180 degrees in opposite directions? So for this, we're just gonna make it simple and we're gonna increase our speed to 25 revolutions per minute. This is to heat up our oil. Agitation is gonna help that heat up, okay? So then we're gonna save this and move on to our next thing by clicking the one of one and adding phase two. Now we're back to where we started. Now we're gonna add onions to, the, to this. So again, we need to choose how we wanna monitor heat, which is gonna be the same. We're gonna to go to 300 because we're gonna be adding cold onions. And in our message, we're gonna say add 20 pounds of onions. Now, all the messages need to be turned on in order for that prompt to work for the user. Click the check mark, you're back to the first screen. Those messages are built in. When we continue from the first phase, after we've built the heat up, we wanna change the way that we monitor the time. We've already reached temp, so now it's about starting each phase incrementally. How long is it gonna to need to agitate for? That's something that we build in that manual phase or when I work with the customer for the first time to see how they're cooking their food. So let's just say 25 minutes, we can add seconds, hours, whatever we like. And then again, we have the option to choose agitation. We're just gonna keep it the same. We have the option to use the jacket heaters as well. So if we're adding cold product, maybe we need to heat up that, that jacket to break that product down faster. So in this case, we're gonna heat the jacket in two levels to 212 degrees. All right, now within each one of these phases, and again, we can do this 20 times, we can add a second message once the product reaches temperature, maybe that's where they add brandy, Maybe that's where they add spices. Maybe that's where they deglaze with something. And then we also have the option for a third message. Now we're still on our onion phase to add something before they leave this. Maybe right before they finish their onions and they go in with the next food product, they do something. So that gives us 60 messaging options total per recipe. All right. 
So we're not going to do that, but that's just a quick example of how we're going to build out a program for the first time. And then if we want to save it, it's going to ask us what our product name is going to be. And we're going to say French onion. And then we're going to click check. It's going to ask us what group we want to save it in. So we're going to say for this, we're going to save it in the chef file. It's going to say wait, and it's done. Now you'll see that that name has changed up here. If we want to go back and see how this would actually look, we're going to go to programs. So we can then lock this out so that no one can come in and change any of the recipes that we've built. We're going to go into programs. We're going to go into all. These are all the programs that I currently have saved, all the recipes I currently have saved. So we're going to come over to French Onion. And this is what we programmed in. Our first thing is going to be add oil. So this is what the user is going to see based off of what we wrote. The mixer always gives a, a countdown so that you can make sure that hands, utensils, and things are away from it. And that's it. To stop it, pull and drag. 